Hello and welcome to the Futuro Hidden Movie Gems podcast. I am your host, Ty Spiker Christensen. And my Viking name would be... <laughs> and we've got <laughs> and we've got Jordan Christensen on the podcast. I will avenge you, father. I will save you, mother. I will kill you, father. How do you even say that? How does that when they go fjell fjell there? Fjell fjell It's Bernard. <laughs> Bernard. I, I got it, guys. Quian. 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 Dude, guys, today we are discussing the Northmen. The Northman. Do you say Northman? The Northman. I say Northman, Northman. but yeah, North. The Northman. The man from the North. This video, this video, this movie came out in 2022. It's in theaters right now. Go see it. It was directed by our boy, Robert Eggers, or Eggers. Yeah, I told told my wife before we saw it, I'm like, try not to get immersed in the film. And she said it's impossible. It's just like all the things like suck you in because it's just like, whoa, dude. I, I watched this movie and I'm like, is there any other time on earth that I'd rather go visit than the present day? Because it looks like it sucks in the past, dude. You want to talk about people that had it hard? Do you think these women in this movie complained about the right to vote? How about the right to not be and pillaged and forced to bear someone's child? Like, it's insane. This is the most insane movie. It gave me so much appreciation for the time I live in. Holy crap. Synchronic. Synchronic, exactly. Like, I'm starting to think that there's no other time like the present. Because <laughs> it would have sucked for everyone. And you know what's funny? Uh, well, so let, let's get into this movie because I have so many things I wanted to say. So, so folks, we're discussing Northman. Uh, like I said, it was also uh, ri- written by some guy. I wish I could pronounce his name. It's S-J-O with an accent. N? Sejon? Sejon. Sejon. S-John. S-John. It's got an exclamation point, so you're supposed to, uh, you know, really emphasize the O. So it's Sir John and Robert Eggers. And, well, is that um, the same, though, in other languages? Because you're talking Spanish, they emphasize it, but is that the same? That's, that's a good point. I know if there's, like, two O's over it, it means something else. Yeah. Which I think they had in Northman, didn't they? Oh, no, they had, like, an It's a cool-looking poster. I love the writing, the little sticks. Is that is that Norwegian? What is that? Viking writing? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like sticks. little sticks. I like that <laughs> handwriting. It looks really cool. I don't know. That's the only good thing from this time period. Uh, guys, this movie stars Alexander Skarsgård. It's got Nicole Kidman, Ethan Hawke, Klaas Bang. What a cool name. He's Fjolnir. Anya Taylor Joy, my girl. It's got Willem Dafoe. It's got Elder Scar, Gustav Lind. I think he found all these Scottish or whatever actors because they all have crazy names. The the lady, Alwyn Fiorari. Wow, these are really cool names. Try reading them. Go to the IMDb right now. Oh, there's one. I know it's pronounced Bjork. B J O with the two dots over it, R K, right? And Ethan Hawke. And he was actually one of the few actors that almost took me out of the movie yes. because I just he, he to his credit, he did a great job. Yeah. But I just I I think too much of Stardom. Maybe it's because he's got like a show on right now with Oscar Isaac Moon Knight on Disney Plus. And we've seen so much of Ethan Hawke lately. Like he's had this renaissance where he's been in all these new movies and everything. So Yeah, which I, I want to see Black, whatever it's called, Black Hat or Black Something, where he like kidnapped Black Flown. It's the one where he kidnaps the kid. I'm excited for that one. Black Flown? Hmm. I don't think I know that one. And Nicole Kidman, but to her credit, she did a really good job in this film. I, everyone did an amazing job. I just feel bad because he carries so much star power in this film compared to some of the other actors. Like, Anya Taylor-Joy did an amazing job disappearing into the role. Like, everyone did. But for some reason, Ethan Hawke is just almost too, too good. He's just too, our two top star. It's like watching Tom Cruise or Leonardo DiCaprio. You're like, it, it's that actor whereas everyone else relatively completely disappeared and Klaus Bang holy crap Fjolnir Fjolnir whatever his name is top notch I'm gonna be following you just like I did Christoph Waltz after Django Unchained and 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 Glorious because this was an amazing performance from him you know I learned in an interview with him is his name the Northman is one of it's Northman is apparently his name in True Blood a, a vampire tv show that he's famous in Oh, isn't that crazy? <laughs> oh, that is crazy. <laughs> the cross the universe or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's wild. I gotta say, I, this movie, gosh, I saw this in the theater. I did a double feature, allegedly theater hopping. Of course, I paid for both tickets, right? Because you know, I'm not a thief, I'm not a common thief. And I never would admit it on a movie podcast that I don't pay for my movie tickets. Uh, I went and saw Northman, or I went and saw The Unbearable 
Weight. Uh, what is it called? The unbearable un- weight of massive talent. <laughs> Bearable weight of a massive talent. Yes, with Nick, starting Nicholas Cage playing his role as Nick Cage, and and then watch The Northman right afterwards. And both are very submersive films, and for different reasons. Holy crap! The Northman, like. I think five minutes into it, I was just completely taken away. I was just out of this world. I was in the 1700s. What does this take place? 1600s? I don't know anything about Vikings. The 800. <laughs> it's just as early as mankind had been established on the earth. I, I know this is kind of early, crap. but... Greenland, Iceland. On IMDb, it did say his next film is going to is going to be called The Night, so he might do a medieval movie. Oh, I'll sign up for that. I am on the Robert Eggers train. I, I don't think he can make a mess at this point. He's got three for three. I think all three Doesn't films... he make the best period pieces ever? <laughs> yes. I, I don't know what it is about the way people talk, and, and some of it's probably accurate, and I don't know how many liberties he takes, but like I'm so drawn in because even if you don't understand every word they're saying, he gives you enough, just enough to understand, the, obviously, the context, the plot, but also character motivations. Guys, there are so many good callbacks in this movie. It's an amazing film. I, I'm maybe recency biased, but I really like this film, so I'm excited to talk about it. Um, so, uh, blown away in the theater, and I can't wait to see this movie again. So, definitely be re- rewatching it. Jordan, how about you? What was like watching it for the first time and rewatching it for the podcast? Um, so it just came out in theater, so I watched it once. I wanted to see it again, but like Ty said, the unbearable weight of massive talent was out, and Jared reviewed it. And I see an image of, of Nicolas Cage, and it says Savior under it. And so I'm like, well, I guess I have to see it now. So I went and saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I just live my life according to what Jared tells me to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I, and like Ty said, recency bias, perhaps it's too early to put it in my top 100. It's at the bottom of my list, but it might move up or it might fall off. Depends on a second viewing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it, Well, it's hard when it's That's like... That's fair, though, yeah. It, it's a move, because I love also what Jared said. He said, really, a lot of, like, when you rank movies, it's like on that experience you had watching it. And so, I mean, especially lately, I feel like a lot of your experiences, Ty, have been amazing, maybe because you're not in a house with screaming children, but like when you're at a theater. Yeah. I just leave my wife to my kids, and I'm like, wow, I should do this more often, dude. Like, Wait, seriously, you, <laughs> she can handle you leave your wife to your kids, or you leave the kids to the wife? No, I leave my wife to the kids. They're, they're freaking velociraptors, dude. They just eat you. You know that scene <laughs> where the cow gets lowered into the cage, and then the trees start rustling? <laughs> That's my poor wife at the end of every day, torn apart by three different children under three years old. So it's good fun. But uh, yes, getting out, getting to the theater. It always made me laugh. I'm like, oh, I could do it from home. But I'm like, nah, not when you have little kids. You got to get away from the kids. Wait till they're gone to sleep. Okay, but I need to know of the three films. Lighthouse is at, and up in the top of my top hundred. I'm still debating. Like I, I put it right above which. And so I'm just like, I don't know. I can't decide. I was going to ask. What yeah, you, it's weird. I, which one's your favorite? I don't know if I even have Lighthouse in my top 100. I can't remember if I do. I need to go through my list again. Yeah, I don't I don't think I have any of Robert Eggers. But again, these are three star, stellar films. So I'm going to have to say, after review, I might have to just put one of his, you know, one of his three films that I'm thinking of, right? Uh, either Lighthouse, Northman, or um, which. Yeah, one of the three has to go in there. I think he's getting even better like i think northman obviously is a very complex movie bigger budget and i still think he handled it really really well he still managed to make me feel like i'm watching an indie film there were some interesting creative choices that were very visually uh appealing and then like there were obviously story beats that he hit but there was like it's like partially a tracking shot but like him climbing into the fortress at the beginning that was just the most insane action scene i've seen since like i don't know john wick or something it was so freaking good and visceral and violent it was freaking crazy the farting and the belching that's what made me think of robert Ayers. <laughs> just fine dude i thought they were wearing loincloths but my wife said she they were yeah half the time i thought they were wearing loincloths because they definitely you know darked out the but like i definitely saw some <laughs> just straight where should they fight at a volcano pretty freaking awesome it's pretty hot in there fight scene that's right it's right. Can't steamy. take all this extra equipment. Oh, it's hot up here. <laughs> we should have come when it wasn't active. <laughs> I just love like how perfect it is because it's like a a, a character of, of circumstance. Like I oh my gosh, I want to get right into just like 
<laughs> well, it, well, let me just let me just like his his journey, somebody. and then getting to the end. Like my wife and I talked about this. Like his he was essentially because the whole I love the family tree. The idea that he had to cut off. I mean, he had to go back and kill. Like there's that decision when he was with Anya Taylor Joy, and I'm like, just go, just run away with her. But it's like he had to go back because if he didn't kill, I mean, as sad as it was, I mean, to kill off Nicole Kidman and the the child. Like if he hadn't, like. She would have raised that child to go it, after them. I would have, I would have been, I would have been more sad if it didn't go down the way it did. Yeah, I would have been much more sad than if it didn't go down the way it did because I was like, oh, that's dark. The kids were just standing on it, like stabbing in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fudge off me, kid! And freaking throws him and slashes him. That was terrifying. Oh, dark. that reminded like, me of Tropic Thunder. I was like, what did I remember that from? The little kid stabbing yes. Jack Ben Stiller, ben Stiller in the back. Or is it, is it Jack Black? Yeah, no, it's one Ben of the... Stiller. And then he grabs it and <laughs> throws Stiller. the kid into the lake. <laughs> 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 and then, dude, freaking, that, that was the one, well, I'll get into nitpicks. That's one of my nitpicks, actually, but anyway. Um, so, yeah, I, I keep going, Jordan. I love what you're saying. Like, yes, he goes from being a son of royalty, heir to a throne, life is great, and then all of a sudden, he's on the run for his life. And now he has to start from nothing. Finds a band of other misfit Vikings that just village, plunder, uh, pillage and plunder whoever. They live at night taking on the personality of a wolf they do not discriminate they uh will pillage anything and everyone and they will pillage everyone yeah they are not picky about who they will pillage Ty, did you laugh though when he's like when they're like they none of these people will last the winter and then he's like he grabs the person throws them to the ground rawr, rawr. Oh, oh they're just like well hey this is a pretty strong guy how do we miss him he's pretty strong <laughs> Maybe, maybe they were a little intimidated. Like, I don't know if I want this guy as a slave. He could rip me in half with his yeah. bare arms. Um, okay, well, I just, I guess there. that's kind of my first thing is his development throughout the character and realizing he had to essentially kill, like, go, go to meet his end. Because, I mean, because of the prophecy, it, I mean, it, it keeps talking throughout the film. I guess it did say you have to choose kindness for your kin or uh, vengeance. And it was the same decision. It, it was shot on film. Is that amazing? So beautiful, you know. Oh, he jumps off the fortress wall and just takes off a mounted horseback rider. It's in so insane, dude. They're at the very opening. They're all sneaking up to the fort, and then they see him. They throw a spear at him. He catches it in flight, spins around, and hurls it right back. Kills another guy. That was so freaking awesome. I was just like, it was a moment like when you watch the Spartans the first time when Zack Snyder. Although it might be better to be slain in battle, unless you wanted to be burned alive in a in a house together. That was so. So horrifying like that was like and that got me the feels dude like I, I was on pins and knees. I felt like I was like having a panic attack like for those people because I was like no one is safe and th for the first time in a movie in a long time where I'm like no one is safe I really felt that and this movie is like like Robert Eggers is only one of the few people out there that's still willing to like try risky things to make really like, it's just, it's not, this is not your typical, like, Hollywood blockbuster, but I think it's doing really well. Critically and audiences are loving this movie that go see it. So I'm just blown away because this does have a feel of an indie movie, like an A24 film almost, but it's obviously higher production and everything. And it's just so well done. Like, it, it's did you, my Ty, mind. did you check the time when he was going to get revenge on the king? Like, when he had seen the king and I was like, wait a minute, there's still like an hour left, like... He's already here. He can kill him like right away. But then it reminded me of Count of Monte Cristo, where it's like it they draw draw out the revenge like slow. Yes, I yes, I I did think that for sure. Especially when they you hear it, it's just a throwaway line. They're like, oh, you heard what happened to him. He be, he traded his kingdom. He had to become like a sheep yeah. herder. So he like and I was like, oh, interesting because it was a total. What I was expecting was yeah, going back to the same location, but it was a whole nother hillside. It was so beautiful and it was a good misdirect because again you had an expectation of how this revenge was going to happen but the very fact that he stowed away as a slave he branded himself as a slave uh, to get back on the ship to get his way back to to the uh to his to avenge his family awesome awesome did you not think of i saw i saw the devil when it's like he has the guy and he can kill oh, yes. him but it's like very no much so yes. revenge is taking over my yes, life very much so yeah <laughs> he's digging around for his heart he has no heart his heart's been taken out like holy shit dude he took his son's heart from him dude and hit it dude 
the wettest, bloodiest torture I've ever seen. Like, just him tied up. He was soaked. When I saw that uh, image of him, oh, freaking broke my well, heart. Well, I dude. love I it. Like, he oh, could have gone time, down and dude. killed all those guards chasing him, but he had it, it, the sword in the sheath. It's because he knew the prophecy. He, w- he, was, he would have killed all those guys because I was like, why is he not stabbing those men? Yeah, fighting without the use of his weapon. <laughs> I mean, really, it was just it was to defend blows and then he had to like incapacitate him with his fists. Like, it was insane. The handball or whatever the yes, game, that was the, the greatest game play. ever. Oh my gosh. I like that. It looks crazy, dude. Doesn't he remind you of the mountain from Game of Thrones? That d- big dude? Oh my gosh. And, and being stabbed doesn't instantly kill you either. I mean, it's like, oh, I got stabbed. In some movies, it's like one stab and it's eh. And then some movies, you know, John Wick, it's almost too clean. So this one was like, I felt like a pretty good blend, even though obviously he'd been stabbed like eight times in the back. Oh, I don't know about that. Freaking awesome. So the guy that had his nose chopped off, that's how the dwarf guy, he was supposed to have that happen to him from Game of Thrones in the show, but they didn't want to CGI it out all the time. So they just gave him a scar on his face instead. No, no, no. The, guy, George, the guy that got his nose cut off, he became Voldemort in the... <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, that it was supposed to, to happen. So remember there was this like really crazy battle and t- the dwarf, he got a, a, his nose in the book, got his nose got chopped off in the book. They're like, hey, this is a TV production. We can't, we can't have CGI in every shot where this character's in. Yeah. Exactly, because he had too many scenes. They're like, just give him a you need You need to do makeup, yeah. And you're like, too many. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so there you go. But when you're Robert Eggers, like you got the budget for it, dude. Oh, and I just really quick wanted to mention too, I, going into the development of this character, I just love from the get-go, he... You know, has his whole life believing, like, there's only one person out there that loves me. Like, he's become so hardened and, like, there's, uh, you know, he's gone through living with these horrible, nasty men that just, like, burn children alive and just... And then he is, you know, along this ride and he's let vengeance essentially consume his life. And then the one person he's there to save, you know, turns against him. And it's like his world is literally shattered until he meets Anya Taylor-Joy, who is the one thing that he gets, finds out that like, wait a minute, I don't need to let vengeance rule my life. Kind of like the end of Count of My Crystal where he's like, last five minutes, like, wait a minute, I don't need vengeance. But because of all the people that he's killed, it's like, he has to end this, this line because otherwise, who knows, they'll send, you know, they'll fight him till the ends of the earth until they kill everyone he loves. So I just mm-hmm. love that, amazing. Oh yeah, for sure. And so, yeah, I, I'd say my two favorite things, camera work, I think that they did a really good job at uh, establishing our character's skill set, his motivation, a lot of things very early on. And a lot of those were one takes was, too. Yeah, like, I mean, like really impressive shots that, that kept going for a long time. Like the whole storming of this fortress is the scene I referred to several times already. It's just so well done. Like clearly Robert Eggers has like a, just a love for his craft it, it's a it's a masterpiece and i don't say that very often it's like a very and that's why it's hard for me to be like oh but but this movie is heavy i just want to throw this out there for people listening like it's a masterpiece but it's like it's a dark film it's intense well it's, if you've seen um, the witch or the lighthouse or listen to us talk about them they're just as dark <laughs> yeah, you, yeah yeah exactly this one just has an overall sense of of dread almost like it's just a harsh life you're thrust right into the middle of it and you're just along for the ride and at the mercy of a great storyteller Robert Eager so I can't shout his praise enough I just think that this is so unbelievable because it's not a movie like I've seen in a long time so I I just it's so hard for me to weigh Witch and Lighthouse with this movie just because they're so wildly different what's weird is I do feel like Witch and Lighthouse had more in common but this one's just so different and and yet there's so many Robert Eager motifs that I really like I, but yeah I love that he reuses his cast I love that Willem Dafoe shows up in this one obviously I love well, and two characters from The Witch Ty did you catch it and yes Anya yeah. Taylor-Joy obviously from Witch and, oh and, no uh, sorry three characters was, then so the oh, who the, the, the father the, with the deep voice he was yes, he grabbed yes, he Anya Taylor Joy. The guy at the, the ship, yes, the guy on the ship at the end. With and that then awesome the lady voice, that yes. had her like she was pecked by that crow. So she oh, was the in the house when she's like, bring the remember. He's like, go do something else, and he grabs the blankets, and then he goes sees his mom in the other room. The lady is in there in that uh, room, 
Anyways. Oh, is she really? Yeah. That's great. I love I love that he's reusing his cast because, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you've gotten to work with these actors. You know that they can perform. They kind of understand how the director works and, you know. But his, Robert Pattinson his quirks is Batman what he's now, for. so he can't make a cameo. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> yeah. too busy making his own uh, his own way in Hollywood. <laughs> maybe if he keeps up with it, maybe Robert Pattinson will go somewhere. You know? Well, I, I think he'll, he'll he wants, I don't think he'll, <laughs> he'll ever play a side character. I think he's you know, usually plays lead it, roles. Full start on Oh, now, actually, he's a tenant. I Maybe. lied. Okay, I take it back. Well, yeah, either the main supporting actor or the main main actor, right? I'd like to see him as more villain. I I, I want to see ever since the king. Yeah, I want to see him as a villain. Oh yeah, time. he I did play an amazing side character. Oh, and even gosh, good time, good. good time, obviously villain and and, and good time or the antihero. Okay, I take it back. Say, and then take it back. What I said. Make him be the Joker mm. next time, hey, real quick. Christian Bale and Michael Keaton. Like you watched Michael Keaton, he was almost unhinged against the Joker. There's that scene where he's famously whips the uh, the pottery off the 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 ceramic pot off of his uh off of the fireplace mantle and against the joker he's like come on you want to get nuts let's get nuts like that's michael keaton being batman then you think of christian bale who literally was uh the american psycho the craziest you know delusion uh psychopath uh serial killer and then you obviously had robert pattinson who and all three of them have played like really unhinged other characters so it's funny to see him like as stoic heroes when they all had like a very interesting uh past uh of uh, of other roles where they played evil anyway that was a side note of batman i just noticed that though when we were talking about it so but uh it, and my other favorite thing, I love the callbacks. There was a lot of callbacks in this film, obviously. Uh, one, his mission. Uh, two, it reminded me of the movie I just watched, The Macbeth. The uh, the tragedy of yes, Macbeth. The ending. A lot of yeah, a lot of that film. A lot of the foretold. It, it, this is whatever yeah, it's the called. Prophecy, prophecy with the Raven Lady. Yeah, it, you know the old witches. It oh, the witches keep showing up throughout. Who? Yes, yes, exactly. And the vision of Crow, where he's like, uh, you know, remember for whom you shed your last teardrop. I I like that motif about you know grief. Yeah, but this you know see this is what I wanted with, no. tragedy of Macbeth to be because I was just like. I want to be able to understand it better because I understood this one better than I did tragedy. Oh, you mean like as far as English, old English is concerned? No, but to be fair, like it, it to I think to uh, Coen Brothers' credit, like it was directly um, from the. Ty, it was only Joe Cohen, okay. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. One of the Cohen brothers. <laughs> but to his credit, like I think it was literally like taken from the play. So obviously, much older speak. But yes, and this one, like I said, I felt like there was more I understood, uh, which I'm grateful for because they could have just gone full blown Icelandic or whatever the heck they speak in uh, Viking land. 1800s, but uh, I enjoyed it because I. I feel like got... was there subtitles? I can't even remember now. There were sometimes subtitles where they would speak, but I think she would speak, and which I thought was really cool. They probably spent so much time learning that beautiful language. Like I said, don't even know what language it was. But... I was worried about Anya Taylor Joy because she's getting so famous. I was really worried. I'm like, oh no, is she gonna be like? You know, I'm not going to be able to get lost in her character. And I was surprised. I actually really enjoyed her character a lot. Yeah. I see, that's that's what I really like about this. I, I did believe the stakes were really high just because, again, his bloodline hinges on the fact of, of, of this lifestyle. It's, it's Vikings. It's pillaging. It's plundering. It's murder. It's... Um, it's always, uh, it's kind of like playing the board game Risk or Monopoly. You only succeed at someone else's expense. So when you run out of supplies or run out of food, you have to go and pillage somebody else. It's somebody else's problem. You have to be stronger and smarter and more ruthless than them. And you come in. What's so great is at the beginning of the movie, there's a scene where Nicole Kidman is getting dressed and uh, the son runs in and she's like, oh, never come into my room unannounced or whatever. Like, never come in when I'm changing. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of silly and I was like, I don't get it. And of course, that's Robert Eggers. He's so smart. Maybe someone else saw the movie and was like, oh, I bet there's something. At the very end, it's revealed. Again, we're going to talk spoilers. We already talked some of the spoilers. Nicole Kimmons, it's revealed that she was not just the loving wife, you know, queen betrothed to this uh, Ethan Hawke. She was actually a slave, slave once that was stolen from her previous home wherever that was, and forced to be uh, in betrothed to this murderous king. And that's what I actually really liked about it. I saw a lot of similarities between their two characters, and I thought Nicole Kidman did a really good job. I really liked her character. I Because at first I was like, something's going to go bad. He's going to... I was so afraid. So so I really liked that, but that callback where, again, she doesn't want anyone to see that she was getting dressed. And you find out later, it's literally because she is branded with uh, a slave's uh, branding, uh, which, uh, again, she was essentially property, but she has to keep up the facade that she she is betrothed to this man and she loves him and that she's happy as a queen bloodline and everything and they had to keep up the facade but then you know it's revealed yeah she was just a slave 
uh, that Ethan Hawke took for himself, which again, and this cycle is she, of violence was she and lying? Because she says, I wanted your father to die. Was she lying to him? Because she was screaming when he was a kid. I'm like, that was a scream. She was not I laughing. know, that seemed very much like a scream, and she claimed to laugh. And he did say, you lie. She's like, oh, I was laughing. Mm, I think right. you're lying. I, I've thought about this a lot. I think it's, she could have been wailing for joy. She's just like, oh, it's finally happened. My, my murderous husband is dead. No, but to be fair... I think it can be completely ambiguous because in the end, she made her choice, right? She ends up trying yes. to kill her son uh, to, to pr- protect her, her newest born son. Her new family, yeah. Let her get over that kiss. But she was going for his knife, I think, right? Or was it because she was like, I'll do anything to survive? I, I got a sense of desperation. I got a sense of... It's just of, like the lighthouse, remember? Nothing when, weirder than in lighthouse. Yeah, <laughs> when he goes in for a kiss and he's like, ah. <laughs> exactly. Well, to phone Robert Pattinson going for a kiss. What are you doing? <laughs> Smacks him. <laughs> Dude, yeah. It is funny because that was very unsettling and unnerving because, again, you understand the relationship. But you're almost like, I mean, these are just two beautiful actors ready to kiss on screen. But, yes, it was very unsettling because you're like, he just, like, is learning all this information about his mother. It's like, this is not what I envisioned in saving my mother. I didn't know that this was all that came with saving my mother. But I, I'll be honest. I did know that something was going to go down, but... Robert Eggers still surprised me. Like, this was not predictable. This was a very fun twist that just threw me for a loop. And I was like, oh, how's he going to get out of this one? Like, now she knows the secret. I even loved it right after their funeral. She's like, there's no witchcraft going on here. This is the, the work of my son. He's back here to get revenge. And he's like, oh, women, stop it. You're being crazy. And he's like, and she's like, no, like, I'm serious. My son. And then he's like, on the fetching hillside. He's like, oh, I'll give you your son's heart back if you let my, you know, my prisoner wife go. Freaking amazing, dude. So freaking good. It just growls at the dog. I would be terrified of that as a human. I'm sure animals have to register that when he growls at it. Oh my gosh. Knocks a guy down, just tears out his throat with his, oh my gosh, with his teeth. It's insane. Insane. It's so intimidating. So intimidating. Like, I can't think of anything more intimidating than that. Like, that night where they're all dancing as wolves. At first, I'm like, oh, this is kind of silly. Like, everyone's in a diaper. And then very quickly, I was like... (laughs) But I, I'm very intimidated. Like, you know, it's like, you know, it's that scene where you're like, it's kind of funny when you think about the Spartans, you know, all standing there in leather diapers with their six pack. <laughs> but then you see them fight and then you're like, okay. Any I love that you call them insult diapers. that I they're have reserved in the, so you're so funny. The, the little leather diapers. Yeah. And, and they're just, they look laughable. And then you see them in action. You're like, okay. I've well, if you call them a diaper, then cloth. it's laughable. <laughs> <laughs> One of my pet peeves that really bothered me is when he does go into his house, he go- he goes to find Fjolnir, Fjolnir, if I'm saying his name name right, Fjolnir, but he ends up finding Nicole Kidman and the son, and he has to kill them both. And then Fjolnir, like, takes his dead son and his wife out of the room. But I'm like, where was he to meet him at the gate? Was he not protecting his wife and his son? I, that's what really bothered me. Fjolnir, like, was nowhere to be found when Alan Skarsgård's character... Amlef goes downstairs, murders his mother and the young son, and Fulmir was nowhere nearby. Like, he just didn't defend his family. It's like, did he leave him? I thought he was a coward and let his family, like, try to fight him or appease his better nature because he was afraid to go in a battle against him. I don't think he thought that he would kill them. That's a good point, too. Maybe he didn't think he would do it. Betray him. And it goes down very quickly that they're not with him. They try to kill him. And then you hear Nicole Kidman's side of it. It's a good father. And you're like, hey, he's teaching good things to his son. He's like, we must work alongside our servants. Like, we need to show him that we're, it's not below us. He probably was the most empathetic, empathetic tyrant ruler that we've seen in a Viking film so far. Because, again, his wife was one of these slaves, right? I mean, and it's really cool that, again, it's crazy because he killed his brother. That's what makes it insane. He takes his brother's wife. You'll never be free. He's, he's the heir to a throne. I am a prince. The other wizard tie that replaced um, William Defoe's character and had his severed head, was that the same guy from Dune? The guy, the guy that floats around, the fat dude? I thought that. I don't see Bill, uh, or what's his name? Bill Skarsgård? Whatever his yeah, name is. Yeah, something like that. It's something Skarsgård. I can't find him in the IMDb, so I don't know if he was it, but I thought it was him. But it sounded just I like him. It, uh, it, it's someone by the name of Ingvar Sigurdsson. Sigurdsson. Maybe they're He's from the, like, the same homeland. They, <laughs> well, I just mean like they, they, must be the same. they just his have a similar so, accent. Yeah. And he looked a lot like him. I actually thought it was Stellan Skarsgård. I did think it was him, Jordan, but yeah, it's the actor Ingvar Sigurdsson. <laughs> so yeah, I totally thought it was Stellan Skarsgård. Well, in Dune, I was thinking, what else was he in? Well, Chernobyl, we just did. But anyway, yeah, I, I did think that was that actor, but I, it turns out it's not him. So, uh, but uh, 
It's crazy. I thought the same actor too, dude. Uh, he would have been perfect for it too. <laughs> well, and and, and like the lighthouse, like dude. you see the day oh, and life of a, a person that works at the lighthouse. I love that you get to see the life of a slave and just kind of the different oh. chores they go through. It's so yes. good. I was crazy. just wondering if Cameron saw him like lifting all that heavy stuff. If Cameron's just like, I need to go work out. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work out. Like, why don't they uprise up? Like, it's probably because they find the same dimple and the same part of his skull. They talked about that in Django Unchained, right? He's like, oh, they got wise enough. But what's really sad is like, there's this really sad codependency that kind of happens because you see the landscape they're in. It's like, if we just kill all the people that are in charge of us, like, we still have to do all the chores that we're doing now yeah. to survive. Like every single thing they ha were doing, it's like you either have to find a new slave to do it for you or you just keep, yeah. yes, and anything could kill you. Yes. Yeah, it's like, where are you going to go? And You have it, nowhere to go. And we it's very likely that can't all they know is what they'll relive. So whoever's the strongest will eventually become the king of that group and then they'll treat everybody just like they, yeah. they it, were treated. It, yeah, full-blown tyranny hierarchy, yeah. He did a good job at not glorifying it because, see, I think yeah. in the trailers did a good job making it seem like, oh, this cool Viking lifestyle is coming back, bro. Like, CrossFit, bro. CrossFit, bro. What's up, bro? I'm going to start going to the gym and start drinking my protein chicks. And then I'm like, watch the movie and I'm like, oh, that Did you suck. think I'm of a a Midsummer in the part when they're potato. all wearing those little head leaves and they're all dancing around the fire? <laughs> there was some of that, yeah. But everyone's get, given a bum deal being born in 800 AD. <laughs> It would suck. Oh, I don't, everything's just muddy. That's what's so terrifying. You hope that your captors are really, really strong because then you're like, maybe they'll protect us if the, if a siege comes in because you're one, like your taskmaster is going to be charged with like, hey, defend your life because if you don't, this new management that's coming in, let's call it new management. <laughs> understatement of the century new management coming in they might lay you off and by laying you off they'll put you in a, in a house and set it on fire okay you're going that's when you know you lost your job <laughs> and you don't know if they're going to be worse than the one you have now <laughs> yeah you're like i might as well love this guy because the next one coming in he's not going to keep me he's going to throw me in the burning building brilliant i gotta say i i'm really upset this movie like costed like 600 million dollars and i think it's grossed worldwide so far like 260 million so uh, I hope they can make back their money. And in the end, don't stop giving him money. But he's he's already proved himself. When you do three movies that are, I would consider, uh, masterful and then, like, one masterpiece, I think you've earned yourself blank checks forever. Because I will always go see your film. Well, and maybe it has to transform checks. into, like, I think like, he some, just might have to work yeah. more with, like, A24. Because this was his big uh, Hollywood yeah. budget film. Right. And and in the end, it, I still think he remained true to himself because in the end, it did not have a Hollywood ending, folks. I mean, yes, it had like... Yes. Some he said part the studio was ending. nice working with them because he said, he said when yeah. he sat in his first draft, he was really nervous, but they, they still worked with them they're pretty like, well. Yeah. They're like, hey, we, we watched Lighthouse, okay? At least one of the persons here <laughs> did. <laughs> and they're like, we understand. Like, you have to end your movie this way. And yeah, it, it is very sad and bleak, but it's kind of cool. Anya Taylor-Joy... And uh, Alex Skarsgård, they hook up. She's pregnant with twins. They can carry on his seed, but his seed won't be safe as long as Fulnir and uh, his family is allowed to remain alive. So he has to go end it. And the same act as protecting the ones he loves, he has to wreak havoc and hatred on his enemies or whatever, vengeance on his enemies. And it's the same act, which I thought was interesting. I like that. I like the prophecy. It's understood both ways because you thought it was an or decision, but it was an and decision, which I thought was kind of cool. In the end, it's still sad because you think he, maybe he could have run away. Maybe they could have gone to the far ends of the earth. But in the end, like you can live in the forest with just you and your two babies for how long? Like if one of you gets appendicitis, you're dead. If your appendix bursts, if you have a cut and it gets infected, you're dead. Like there, there's just no happy ending in this world. Like you, you live for 40 years and you die. <laughs> really quick. So I, I don't want to get like- As long as I die, Battle. I don't want to get religious here, but uh, just something interesting about our religion is we teach there was an apostasy, which, you know, the church wasn't here and people. So it's just this idea that, you know, during this whole era, all this stuff happened. And which is interesting because there's an episode of Family Guy where in the, the, it's just, it jumps to the future and Stewie Griffith asks, like, what's going on? Because he he talks to his older future self and he's like, oh, because technology like skyrockets. And he's like, I don't understand what happened. And he's like, oh. Once we, you know, stop believing in God, like, you know, everything took off and it's like, okay, like, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> we just know from the knowledge of like our history is that there was an apostasy where Christ church wasn't upon the earth. 
and this it happened. So I'm just saying. And look what it brought them. I know. This it, wonderful lifestyle. It's just because. The, ritualistic murder. Nonsensical medical <laughs> treatments. Where they shove your hand in open wounds. Like, oh. It, it's just man, funny because somebody. Weird. People that believe that, like, God doesn't keep. It's people that don't follow God that um, turns. When you just turn to human society like look at this like they're insane they just like tear each other apart eat each other and i don't know when you rely upon all right all right thanks for the sunday school lesson here. <laughs> okay um so love it jordan and if you get tired of pillaging you go back to when you're tired of just go back to pillaging it's just it gets the old horses. but you know it's the worst <laughs> and i i also like the visuals i thought it was cool the valkyrie that appeared she kind of freaked me out i thought it was just some nerd wearing braces but uh very intimidating like you want to talk about women empowerment very intimidating valkyrie i'll put it that way and the woman in this film like no nonsense tough fighters man nicole kidman anya taylor Joy. i'd love to her character like poisoning the whole group with her poison stew i thought that was freaking awesome everyone's hallucinating whatever lsd that that was see <laughs> there's a drug scene the unbearable weight of massive talent there's a drug scene in this one let's just say i'd much rather be living in the world of unbearable weight of massive talent drug scene than in this movie because it literally was taking out his own throat with his knife. He's just stabbing himself in the neck repeatedly. I'm like, whatever visions are possessing him, it's better to tear his own throat out than to sit through an LSD trip. That was freaking awesome. So I, I like that. And I liked how they both used... Uh, I liked how they hooked up because they were. she saw him sneak on the boat and very early on she knew his secret. And I like how you kind of get to know them. They're like chained together and they're like talking about his purpose. He's there for revenge. And she's like, well, good. Like, I, I don't want to be here. And every time like they're plotting this plan, I just thought it was really cool. And then after he gains the respect, after he saves their uh, the prince, the young prince from literally being bludgeoned to death in this sport. Like, it looks like you just, anything goes in the sport. You beat people with billy clubs. And I thought like rugby was tough, you know? Jeez, have you watched the sport? Are you think lacrosse is tough these guys no helmets no equipment just a, a, a metal or not a metal but like a a wooden bat <laughs> that's it he just hit the ball against a stick he just started headbutting him to death dude, this movie's insane there's no way he survived that dude this i thought so he was insane. actually my mouth dropped i thought he was gonna smash that kid's head in the little kid <laughs> Well, he was about to. He was literally in the act of doing it. And then <laughs> Scar comes and saved him. I would say if this movie was made like 20 years ago, I think you could have had Viggo Mortensen play Viggo's, you know, Alice Skarsgård's character. I think that would have been the only actor I would have trust other than him. Yeah. Maybe the fella from uh, Sons of Anarchy. I keep seeing him in things. He's in a lot of uh, Guy Ritchie films. What's his name? I don't know his actor's name. I, well, long. I think Robert Pattinson <laughs> probably could have done it. It would have been a different take, but it... Would have been interesting. Just animalistic. Skarsgård did it, dude. He was an animal in this film. Do that for scheduling. We couldn't have had Jared Leto's <laughs> interpretation of this role. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Skarsgård was, I would say, perfectly cast. But like yeah, I said, he was. It's just fun to, in my mind, it's fun to like, speculate who I would have chosen. Holy crap. Dude, when he was walking, his fetching shoulder, his freaking tra trap trapezoid, <laughs> trapezius or whatever, his freaking like walking and lumbering, dude. It's like, oh my gosh, he can move mountains. Oh, you were born in darkness. And he just bites his throat up. It'd be extremely painful <laughs> for, for, for me. <laughs> he just catches his spear and throws it back. Oh my gosh, it's unreal, dude. Unreal. Great film. Oh, and, and Macbeth, or, or yeah, the Vengeance film, right? Yeah, the tragedy of Macbeth. It is the Macbeth story, or or even like uh, uh, Hamlet and, and all those. Yeah, Revenge Tale. A Tale of Revenge is just freaking awesome, though, because you get the characters, you get the motivation, and just go with it, run. And this movie just didn't seek to amaze me. Just, just uh, didn't, wait, didn't cease to amaze me. <laughs> it didn't seek to, it, it didn't set out to amaze me, but it, it did. <laughs> I think it meant to amaze people. Man, go see this film. Support Robert Eggers, folks. Make sure he gets the money necessary so he can keep making fun. And you know what? He's not going to be out for the count. This is like when Christopher Nolan, uh, he's now making a new movie, right? Oppenheimer, which I'm really excited about. Making of the Atomic Bomb. It's got freaking Killen Murphy playing. Uh, I'm excited. I'm tuned in. We mentioned before the podcast, the commercial for Knowing, which is really sad. The poster has like a hole in the O in Knowing, and it's right over his head. And I guess he has like dementia or there's like, there's a thing in it where he's suffering from short-term memory loss or something. And now it's just the regular effects of being in old age, you know? It's really sad. Liam Neeson. Oh, Liam Neeson. Poor guy. He used to be a dramatic actor. What did we do to him? We just did, like, like, like we did with Bruce Willis and Clint Eastwood. The guy's, like, 93 years old and he's still playing action heroes. I'm like, Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford, he's, like, 80. It's like, let's keep bringing these guys back for action movies. Like, you can bring, like, Alex Skarsgård and he'll bring it. Holy crap, action hero number one right now for me.
Well, them and JD Washington. I they just need to take some lessons Smashing from plates against this John Wick. I'm like waiting for the next action series because John Wick obviously still got it, but like yeah, like still what, got it. Where where's our our next like total recall? Like, What's where, next? Die Hard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the next Die Hard. Thank you. Just something. The where's our die next hard. action something. movie? Something. Where's our John yes. McTernan? It's ambulance. Michael yeah, Bay. Oh, dude, yeah, Michael Bay needs to come. <laughs> dude, you need a hook. You know, it needs to it needs to be about. Uh, you know, a, a kidnapping or a jewel thief or something. You know, uh, Ocean's Eleven. Anyway, folks, Jordan, would you recommend The Northman? Yes! <laughs> ah! Very strange. A lot of leather diapers. And uh, have you seen anything lately? Do you want to throw out anything? I saw Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. We got to review it next week on the pod. A lot of fun. Nicholas Cage is Nick Cage. Still watching Atlanta and Better Call Saul? Amazing. Oh, I can't wait to watch the new episodes of Better Call Saul. I haven't watched it yet. Oh, Jordan, have you seen episode three? No, I haven't watched any episodes oh, yet. You haven't seen any of Better, uh, Better Call Saul yet? No. Oh, dude. Dude. Oh, but I watched, watched some other season. movies that were amazing, like Midnight. It's the same. One mm. of the actors from Squid Game. It's a South Korean film. We'll definitely do it on the pod Squid eventually. It's a, it reminds me a lot of No Exit. Very fun. Exciting. Exciting. Oh, but a Korean No Exit? Sign me up. Because you know they did it right. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Wait, Wait Until Dark because the, one of the characters is, like, disabled. So it's like, it's like Hush. That's what it's called. Ah, disability. All right. Folks, this has been Future Hidden Movie Gems. Leave us an email, five stars, uh, futuremovies at gmail.com. Tell us a movie that you'd like us to review, a movie that we reviewed in the past. Leave us a comment, uh, five stars. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And everybody, this has been Future Hidden Movie Gems signing out. Peace. Peace. Ah!